Uh, questions from the panel? Uh, Dr. Genscher. Yes, Thank sir. Uh, Sorry to put you on the spot, by the way. Oh, that, that's okay. I'll, I'll return the favor. You're very good. Please do. Uh, uh, thank you for reminding me to look up my sermon text for this Sunday. Since uh, it is Saturday afternoon. Good man. So that's a good idea. Of course, if, if need be, I can always pull off uh, the collection of Dr. Scare's sermon for a classic Lutheran sermon. Classic. Exactly. I can always preach that tomorrow. But a uh, bit of a loaded question for you. Uh, according to these criteria, is Jesus a classic Lutheran preacher of law and gospel? This is a very good question. Actually, uh, several years ago, I did one of those uh, Peeper lectures for CHI on the, the divine preaching of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my ultimately, um, I, I think the, the, the point is that Jesus uh, preaches with the very same authority that we, that we have. And that is the, the scriptures. I mean, Jesus made his preaching always based on the scriptures. And so he would, uh, would declare with that authority that we also have the opportunity to do. Um, I would say this, uh, when, you, when you look at the preaching of Jesus, we have relatively few sermons per se, uh, that is, you know, texts of sermons as they, they might have been. Um, what you definitely have is Jesus' sermons in the Gospels, uh, you know, sometimes a piece here, a piece there, where the real sermon isn't even the Sermon on the Mount, which is, you know, three chapters, that's lengthy. But the sermon, sermons, we put the parentheses around the S, the sermon, sermons of Jesus that we have are the Gospels themselves. And in the, the four Gospels, I think you have a magnificent, uh, magnificent declaration of this. Yes. I have a, a question because I have been working on my pericope for uh, Sunday, but I have, since Sunday night, right? I haven't actually gotten to the end of it, okay. of the sermon writing. So I'm right. going to finish that up tonight when I go yep. uh, back to Columbia. But uh, it really has uh, to do with what uh, Justin said here. I see this all over in, in Jesus' uh, teaching. I mean, the end of the pericope for me and the one-year pericope system tomorrow is... Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yep. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here this the, is the gospel, gospel of, of the Lord. Lord. <laughs> um. Yes? Is there a way of doing what, I mean, is Jesus classically a Lutheran? I see sure. him, sure. and I also sure. see this uh, in the, the uh, teaching of John the Baptist, which Jesus followed in. Sure. The message was always one of repentance, which sounds a lot like work. Now, right. the first part of the pericope is the wedding banquet. Right, right, right. But the question is... Yep. Well, obviously, again, you know, same drill, um, because number one, what we have in the Gospels is, in each case, is a part of the whole. Um, more importantly, remember that much of what Jesus was doing was very um, in the moment, live and in person, contacting people, much the way Walther would say... Law for law moments, gospel for gospel moments. Uh, sell all you have and give to the poor and follow me, you know. And he went away sad. It was still a law moment at that time. It was the right thing at that, that time, for, for example. Um, well, I, well, I another thought just suddenly escaped my mind. Um, oh, yeah, I know what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is of great, greatest importance. And particularly, you know, anytime you're talking about, about parables, um, the, the point of the parable is always to direct us to the one speaking the parable. And in the one speaking the parable, the gospel is always present. The, the one who uh, takes offense and leaves the one speaking the parable leaves under the law. But the one who hears the parable and sees in the one speaking the, the wisdom of God himself now here has the one who is also the deliverance from the law that Christ has just spoken. We, we aren't quite that. 
is. No, and I notice also in the uh, in this pericope too that that is the end. I mean, Jesus yeah, right, leaves on exactly. a on a harsh yeah. law moment, yeah. and then after he had finished these right. things, he takes the uh, disciples apart. By the way, I don't preach that way. I think I'm in my uh, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, 84 for 84 so far. Very good. All right, Chris. Good hope man. To continue that. All right. Keep so it you up. don't preach like Jesus. Good job. Good job. No, not like that. <laughs> Just wanted to make. <laughs> Thank you. Ken, yeah. you you were talking about that that last question. Did Christ preach a good Lutheran sermon? Oh. Uh, I guess I would argue from the other standpoint that so many of the times what we have recorded in the four Gospels is more law than, than Gospels to those who need it. One of his last instructions in Luke 24, 47, and repentance and forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name. Sure. If there is no repentance, there is no forgiveness. Sure, but, but of course, I mean, so that, that is as perfect an epitome of law, gospel, preaching. Mean, that's the mandate for preaching. That's the perfect epitome. Repentance, ice, into, for the purpose of forgiveness of sins. And the point that, that Jesus is really making there is that you preach for repentance, absolutely. But it's never intended to be an end in itself. But it's all repentance is, for the purpose of then announcing forgiveness. But if there is no repentance, then right. there, you do not forgive them. That's a, well, there's no John, question. Law for law moments, gospel for gospel moments. That's right. That's, that's, that's very, very Lutheran and very Walther. Any questions? Uh oh. Good job. <laughs> Metanoia, yes. does not mean law as in law gospel. It is the technical term for the entire preaching of John the Baptist yes. and for Yes. And for Jesus, repent for the kingdom of the heavens' is hand means to believe in Jesus. It does not, here's a case where you don't read what the, how the Lutheran confessions use the word back into the, the Bible. And that is a tendency which Lutherans think and do, fostered by some of our most eminent theologians that a word has only one meaning that applies to multiple situations. If you're looking for a synonym for repent, it's believe the gospel. That, and, and Mark changes it. He has repent and believe the gospel, where Matthew just has repent. And he puts in the word believe, probably because to avoid this other idea that this refers to sorrow, it does not. The entire ministry of Jesus falls under the phrase, repent for the kingdom of the heavens is near. And the gospels, there's no copies of my sermon on the Mount book, but the Lutherans teach it's law. And four generations of Lutherans are wrong on that one. Yep. I agree with you on that part. That, you know, the, the, the first part, remember what, what uh, now, you won't like this either, but what Luther, what Walther does with repentance, anybody remember? And likewise also with gospel, wide sense, narrow sense. Sometimes, and he would say, sometimes it refers to both together and sometimes to contrition without faith. Dr. Boyeron. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, have you ever known, how many of you remember hearing Walter A. Meyer preach? A couple of them. Um, and the thing that surprises me is how much he was not a typical Missouri Synod or Lutheran preacher. He was very pietistic, I understand. He had a problem with the objective justification, too. Um, and yet the people appreciated so much his sermons, and uh, yet they left him, I'm sure, under the law often. It's a riddle to me how they could appreciate him so much. But um, there was a certain dynamic there of rhetoric that kind of caught them and carried them along, I guess, but it's quite a remarkable thing with a man of such famous preaching ability could be so law-oriented. Just observation. Um, that's true. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I shouldn't second that. We should let that go as is, but uh, I had one of my students uh, analyze one um, Lutheran Hour sermon of, uh, 
last year, and they all saw it right away. 